Hello guys, here we are again. So, I just solved this problem, and in this problem, we have this composite structure, if you want to call it like that. I don't, it's not a composite structure in terms of materials, but it's composite in terms of behavior. Uh, it was to draw the diagram, but these two connections were pinned. Now, we are going to reproduce the problem, or repeat the problem, not reproduce, but the two supports are fixed. So now, this is going to be a fixed support, and this is going to be a fixed support, and that makes a huge difference. Because now, if I use the, the portal method, yes, I can calculate immediately, I can use the portal method and say, oh, portal method, first, uh, all the shear is absorbed by whatever, 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 and make place hinges to make it, uh, to make it, place hinges to make it statically determinate. Okay, I have three here, I have three here, so three is six, plus one extra condition that I get. Uh, if I use, if I use the condition that the shear is absorbed by the columns, I have one extra equation, so I need two hinges. Place hinges at mid height here, but not at mid height of the total, at mid height of the column. So my first hinge is going to be here, and this is going to be 2.5. So once we have that hinge, what we do is that we reproduce that heat thing here. Uh, remember, this is not connected directly to the column, but to a pin that is let's say attached to that column otherwise it wouldn't it wouldn't be a truss it would be a frame these are not moment transmitting or transferring connections okay now we have that and we have this force here of four this force here of eight distance 1.5 and distance once i place the hinge 2.5 once you have the once you have the hinges in place here and here, you can put that. This is gonna be the vertical. This is gonna be the horizontal. Vertical, horizontal, and I don't know. This is what A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P. So this is gonna be H X. This is gonna be I X H Y and i y right there h and i those are the places where we introduce the hinges fictitious of course hinges for calculation purposes now once we have that hinges the first step was introduce hinges wherever the hinges are needed done the second step is the columns are absorbing the shear in equally except the interior columns that absorb twice as much shear so if i say that if I say that the shear here and the shear here are the same, so h x plus i x has to be equal to two, 4 plus 2, 12. And if they are the same, then each one of them is 6 kilonewton. Exactly as we did before. This is the same approach. Now, what is the next? Uh, what, what is the next thing? That, uh, I didn't draw the other part, but of course, if you look at the bottom part now of this, you're gonna have here i, uh, y. You're gonna have here this uh, in this direction of six, and then this is gonna be here six. This is gonna be here uh, six. This is gonna be here six. This is gonna be here six, and this is gonna be here like that, and this is gonna be like this, so that means that this is gonna be like that, this is gonna be like this, and the difference is this, like that. And this is the moment at column A here, and the moment at B. So that's going to be the difference here. So now, how do we calculate the rest of our unknowns? I can do moment at IY in this part. 
So I can do, for example, summation of moments at i equals 0, like that, in that part. So if I do that, then what do you get? You get 4 times 1.5 plus 2.5, which is 4. 4. 4 times 4, negative. Now 8 times 2.5 negative this passes through the point plus hy times this distance which is 4 as given here 4 equals 0 and we can calculate hy 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 is negative 16 plus negative 20 is negative 36, negative 36 divided by 4 equals 9. I don't know what I'm using the calculator. Equals 9 kilonewton. Okay, 9 kilonewton. Now, uh, once I have that, I can do summation of forces in y equals 0. And if this is 9 kilonewton, well, guess what? This is 9 kilonewton. Summation of forces in y equals 0 means iy equals 9 kilonewton. Okay, now we have that. Uh, we need to calculate now the the forces the same way that we did before. If we need the if we need the diagram, right? But I'm gonna continue down, and I'm gonna calculate these forces here. So this is gonna be nine uh, here. Is that correct? My y is nine. So this is gonna be nine here and this is going to be 9 9 kilonewton I think so yeah 9 kilonewton 9 kilonewton and this is going to be 6 kilonewton I already put it there but it, it looked weird and this is going to I'm going to put it here 6 kilonewton and this is going to be equal to 9 kilonewton and 9 kilonewton now I can calculate this moment I know this distance is 2.5 because it's this distance here, 2.5. So I can do moment at uh, h. I can do summation of moments at h equals 0. Or at here, same, 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 same difference like my son says. So then you have negative 6 times 2.5, negative 6 times 2.5 plus ma equals 0 and then you get MA equals a 15 kilonewton meter so I have already this value and you can do the same thing and calculate this one if you need to so now I have my reactions I have my moment but I still need these three forces applied there so what do we do with those three forces applied there then we go and we do the same thing that we did before we're going to get we're going to get a cut there or I can take the whole the whole thing if I want to but this is not what I want to so and I'm going to put this 4 here this 8 here and then you have this is called Fe Fe, Fe, or here, and then this is gonna be called a Eg or Ge, Ge, and this is gonna be called a Gc. There you go, Gc. And this angle I know it, alpha, and once again that alpha is three, four, five like that and then I'm going to have this force here of 9 and this force here of 6 that's what we have over there okay perfect beautiful now we have to calculate the reactions how summation of forces not the reaction the internal bar summation of forces in y equals 0 same thing that we did before 
So we have the vertical component of this is 3 fifth GE minus 9 equals 0, which gives GE equals a uh, pass it the other side 315 15 kilonewton in tension because I assumed it in tension and it was in tension. Now the next step could be doing summation of moments at G. The same thing that we did before. Summation of moments at G equals zero. Like that. Summation of moments at G equals zero. If I do summation of moments at G equals zero here, let me just put the distances. This is 1.5, this is 2.5. Remember we are at the hinge. So if I do moment there, it's gonna be negative four times 1.5, this one, plus Fe times 1.5, this one, plus minus six, minus six times 2.5 equals zero. And then from here, you can calculate a Fe, and Fe is going to be equal Two. That's a dramatic pause there. Two. This is uh, fifteen and eighteen. This is fifteen and this is six divided by one point five. Fourteen. Fourteen kilonewton as was assumed in compression. Why is in compression? Because I assume it was in compression and I got a positive value, meaning. It is in compression. And now we can do summation of forces in x equals zero to calculate our last unknown, which is gc. And then you have four plus eight minus six minus gc plus the horizontal component of ge. The horizontal component of ge is four fifth, four fifth, four fifth, four fifth of GE and GE is this plus FE and FE is that equals zero. So from here I can calculate GE a uh, GC right GC as twelve this is six this is 6, this is 6, positive 6 plus 14 is 20, 20 minus, 20 minus 12, let's something weird here I don't know what I'm doing let me try again is 4 yes correct plus 8 yes correct minus 6 is correct minus GC which is the one that I'm looking for plus GE times 4 fifth which is correct minus FE minus FE minus FE so let's try again 12 minus 6 plus 4 fifth times 15 minus 14 that's 4 4 makes sense let me see <coughs> yeah 4 makes sense and it's in compression also I got a big value here before and I knew that something was going on and this is something that you have to start developing also when you see something that I mean a number that falls out of proportion don't just copy it go back and review it because something wrong is happening now we have this thing here now we can go and we can proceed to do the the shear moment diagram well the moment diagram but before doing the moment diagram I'm gonna need the shear diagram at least I'm going to need the shear diagram 
I don't know about you. You might be more proficient than me at doing this. This is a perfectly straight column. And I'm going to put everything that I have, which is this force of 4, this force of 8, distance 1.5, distance 2.5, 2.5, now here you have Fe, I'm going to put the value 14. Here I'm going to have DC, 4. And here you're going to have this one, which is uh, GE. And I'm not going to put that value. However, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put the value. This is what, 15. But I'm going to put the triangle here again. Triangle is 3, 4, 5 alpha alpha what I'm interested remember is in this and in that and once again just to show you how fried my brain is I just change the direction again I'm copying from here and I copied it wrong so and how do I realize that not because I compare with my notes but because once again that wasn't making any sense going in that direction Okay, like that and like that. And now we can, if we put our local coordinate system. Oh, I didn't put this. Wait, 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 wait a second. Here. This is nine. This is six. And the moment is 15. Now we are talking about, now we can, now we can do our shear moment diagram. So let's start with the shear diagram. Do you have any concentrated force acting here? Yeah, of course, sure, six. So that's gonna be six. Jump up, six. Between these two points, nothing, constant. Now you go to this point, and this point, you have to combine all the forces that you have here. What are those forces? Four to the right, eight to the four, eight to the right, four to the left, and then this is going to be four fifth of GE in to the right also. Four fifth of GE is a uh, fifteen twelve, right? This is going to be twelve. Hopefully, because my brain is not working. It's working worse than usual, which is a lot. 15 times uh, 4 fifth, that's 12, right? Yes, 12. So this is going to be 12 here. I don't care about the axial. I'm not doing anything with the axial. So this is going to be 20. And this is going to be uh, 4 in the other direction meaning the resultant of all of this is going to be one force pushing it down and is equal to once again 20 16 16 there's something weird here again 16 no 16 yeah 16 is right it's right so 16 here now if this is 6 and i push it in this direction with 16 i'm gonna keep this in positive remember I'm going to reach this point which is 6 minus 16 and this is 10 and it's going to be constant up to this point and at this point if I combine these two I'm going to have a force acting in this direction of 10 which is going to make this close and jump to zero and remember this is the shear and what do you say now? You say yes. Small yes. Now we have to do the moment diagram. The moment diagram. Now you have you have to start here with this concentrated moment, and and if you want to flip it, I'm gonna flip it just for making it easier for you. Now you have this moment. Remember the moment is there and it's acting in this direction. You look at this this thing here, this side, and it's pointing down, meaning this is gonna be a, a this is gonna be a pushing down like that it's going to start with negative 15 the moment now this area 
is going to be 6 times uh, we place a hinge here don't don't forget about that we place a hinge there meaning ours our drawing our diagram here has to be zero so let's check it out negative 15 and this is 6 times 2.5 is positive 15 so that means that is zero correct and then goes here again same slope same slope and this value is going to be 6 times 5 30 positive 30 minus 15 positive 15 and once you reach this point here you have this distance which is 1.5 and this is negative 10 times 1.5 is negative 15 positive 15 closes in zero and now you can put a big guess here yes and that would be the solution for this problem now if you compare this with the one that we did before if i can find it 